The Sawyer Homestead was built in 1872 and 1873 and is named after Jenny Toll Sawyer, who was the most a recent person to live in the home until it was deeded to the city in 1938. Well, now I'm talking with Ruth Gordon, and her specialty is hair works, which was a fascinating hobby of the late 1800s. Can you tell us about your piece? This piece was made in the late 1850s. The woman in the picture actually made it, and it's her hair. And uh, it's typical of what they did in the 1800s. You said this was done before photography was common. Yes, it was done before as an earthy bond between loved ones. How sweet. And you have done quite a few of these pieces? Yes, I started into it in 1978, and I've been doing it over 30 years. Uh, if any of you have been to the Monroe County Fair, you may have seen some of these pieces. Yes. Okay, thanks for showing us your, your collection. Okay, now I'm here with Ken Roberts, and he's going to give a demonstration in regards to a War of 1812 weapon. How to load and fire a musket. First of all, you needed four good teeth, two on the top and two on the bottom, to tear a paper cartridge like this, right here. The paper cartridge is wrapped, the ball is wrapped with string uh, in brown paper. It's tied above and below the ball, and then just above the ball is your 90 grains of powder. So if you wanted to shoot this gun, the first thing you got to do is open the flash pan on the musket like that, exposing the flash pan inside there. Okay. A little touch hole inside, that's where the fire burns through into the barrel and sets the main powder charge off in the gun. Next thing you do is you tear the paper cartridge. You put the cartridge in your mouth like that. You tear that paper off, fill that pan up halfway with priming powder. Close the frizzing down, put the gun down on the ground, pour the rest of the powder in the barrel, tear all the excess paper off from the cartridge, take all that excess paper off and just put that part in the barrel like that with the twisted end down. Then you take the ram rod off, this button in right here, and ram the ball down on top of the powder. And then when you fire it, you cock the hammer all the way back like that. Take the hammer stall off, and when it fires, the flint comes forward, strikes the frizzing, breaks off hardened pieces of steel which turn red hot. They drop in that pan, sets that priming powder off, and it fires the ball out the barrel. If you are really good, how many rounds could you shoot? Two to three rounds a minute. Two to three rounds a minute. When the ball comes out the barrel, that little piece of paper on the ball opens like a drag chute and lets the ball fly by itself. If you didn't have that paper on the, wrapped around the ball, if the barrel was clean and you tried to shoot downhill, the ball would roll out the end of the barrel. If it rolled halfway down the barrel, the, uh, and you fired it, it would blow the barrel up. So you don't want to do that. And this what particular... Weapon, you said fired about 100 rounds? Fire 100 rounds? No, we, no, I mean about 100 yards. Yeah, they're good for accuracy of around 100 yards. Okay, okay. But also that patch around the ball, what that does is cleans the bore as you shoot it. If you didn't use a paper patch like you wrapped in paper like that, and you tried to shoot it in a battle, you would only get 8 or 10 rounds and the barrel would be so fouled up that you'd have to pound the ball down the barrel. If you pound the ball down the barrel, you distort it. If you distort it, then you can't hit it anything. There's no accuracy whatsoever if you do that. Okay, thanks a lot for your demonstration. You're welcome.